it starts now. What are y'all, seven, eight graders, pretty much? So you have to start now. You can't wait until uh, it's about to be time to go to college. You gotta put the time in, you gotta put the work in now. You can't settle, you can't get satisfied and comfortable. So just remember, when you're, going, when you're working out, always wanna get better. Continue to wanna get better, never settle. You know, keep working hard, but when you get to college, it is definitely a journey. Uh, it's a process. When I first got to Louisville, I came, like you said, I was a McDonald's All-American. I was doing all this USA basketball. But when I got to college, I got a rude awakening because everyone is good. And you have to separate yourself. So how do you separate yourself? Okay, you got practice, you got a practice a day. Go in the gym before practice and get shots up. Go in after and get shots up. Uh, watch film, watch basketball. I know, how many of y'all watch WBA? I'm curious. And be honest now, because when we ask you, tell me a player, tell me a player in the WNBA, uh, let me see if you can answer that. Y'all can tell me a player too? Or that's asking too much? Don't, now don't tell me one of the, the more popular players. Don't say, oh, Skylar Diggins. Say Candace Parker now. Yeah. Say right. So tell, who, who watches the WNBA? Put your hand up. If you really watch it. See how it's about? I was the same when I was younger. I watched the WNBA because that's where I know, that's where I wanted to be. So I wanted to watch those players and say, okay, what can I steal from her game? What can I steal from her game? And you put that in your game and you're better. You, you never want to get comfortable with just what you're doing. You always want to continue to improve and elevate. And that's in life in general. But anyway, like I said, back to the WNBA thing. That's important to watch that because you see how talented and how good you have to be. You gotta think, it's only 12 teams in the WNBA and it's 144 players total out the whole world. So that's one of the hardest leagues to get in, but you can do it. You can do it if you put your mind to it. You keep God first, you pray, you know, you do the right things, being a good person, make sure you, you know, get it done in the classroom as well, because if you're not getting it done in the classroom, you're not gonna go to college. So that's how you, you know, you gotta do, you gotta do the little things to get to where you really wanna go. If you 
you got the game and you got the heart and you willing to put the time in and focus on what you need to do and what you need to do to get better and listen to your coaches, you can get to the next level. Don't 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 let nobody tell you that because I'm five six. He gave me an extra. <laughs> <laughs> so I was a ballerina at first and I, I ran track so that's what I was doing but one day in the fourth grade I seen a sign saying girls basketball tryouts and I just went to try, try it out and made the team first time I picked up a ball so that's kind of how my journey started you have any questions? so how do you do your work while you're in the hood like playing college ball? so how do okay how do I stay focused in school? so they give you an iPad and you also will get a laptop. You just have to, that's on you. You have to stay on top of your grades. You have to know what's going on. Don't get me wrong, you have an academic advisor and you have tutors, but when you're on the road, you have to stay, that's what that's what coming in, uh, being organized comes in at. Because you have, I had a planner and I would write all my stuff down as, as the week go by. So I knew exactly what I needed to do. Cause you'll forget, you got a ton of things to do. You practicing, you playing, you got to find time to eat and do everything else. So. You, it, that's up to you. You gotta stay focused on that. Mm -hmm. What was your degree in college? My degree was sports administration. My minor was communication. Yeah. Let me ask you this: when you when you got to college, and and remember, she came out. She said she was a McDonald's All American, so that means she was one of the top twenty players in the country. When you got to Louisville, how easy was it? When you got there, like far as meaning the coaching or how hard was it? Okay, uh, just the coaching, right? Yep. The coaching was on another level for me because my high, me and my high school coach were really close. Um, I still talk to him to this day, older guy. But um, we were really close. Like he was tough on me, but it was a different type of tough. So when I got to college and Jeff was tough on me, <laughs> so it was a different it took it to another level but I told Coach Walls that I wanted to go to the WNBA if you have dreams and you want to get somewhere and you tell somebody that they're going to make sure you get there so he was hard on me and he pushed me but I just always kept in my mind this is what you want so no matter how hard the coaching is if you listen to what they're saying and not how they're saying it you can take something out of it and you can get better because your coaches are there to make you better Sometimes they can, they can be rough or get on your nerves or this and this and that, but that's what they're here for, to get you better. And it's, and it's just like even like your parents. Like, let's just be honest. Sometimes our parents, you'd be like, damn, shit. This, this, this. You know, but at the end of the day, everything that they do, their whole world and their whole life revolves around you. Yep. Like, every, when they go to work every day and they doing whatever, it's a, it be, they do that because it's to put you in a better situation to be successful. And it's the same way with coaching, all right? So she went from uh, all world in high school to Louisville, and she just was another girl that had to now prove herself again at this level, right? So the proving and, and the, 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 the want to wanting to get better, like, it can never stop. It can, ne it can never stop, all right? Uh, this, does anybody else have any other questions for Dana? Yes, ma'am. Uh, do you like authenticity sports? Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to tell y'all that. <laughs> yeah. I like the sport. So, yeah. <laughs> if you could tell a young kid one skill that they should work on, what would it be? Um, one skill. I would say being able to use both hands. I think that's really uh, underestimated. Um, being able to attack both ways, it's harder to guard that way. Uh, who's your like, role model? Like, who do you look up to? My dad is my role model. Uh, actually, both my parents. But um, do you mean basketball? Or just for, have you ever had like, a teammate or coach? That so actually, I played against and played with in the finals all my role models. Candace Parker, Skylar Diggins, 
Those were oh, my that's some legends. Yeah, those were my three. <laughs> like, literally looking up to them when I was, I want to say in the fifth grade, I got a Diana Taurasi jersey, and I just was playing against her. Like, it's mind blowing. But, like, it's a dream come true. So, like I said, you know, you can, you can do whatever you put your mind to. Don't let nobody tell you that you can't. And I'm a, people used to tell me all the time, she's five, six, she's too little, she's too small, she can't do this. Yes, she can. Yes, she can. That's, that's what I take pride in. Take pride in proving people wrong and coming out on top. And, you know, when 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 Dana got drafted, I think she got drafted 13th. Yeah. So she fell to the second round, and everybody expected her to be first round because she, she just terrorized college basketball. So once again, she had to get in the situation, and she had to prove herself. So even with all the accolades and as decorated as she was coming out of Louisville, she still had to prove herself. So that's what she's talking about, maintaining and keeping that chip on her shoulder every time. So now out of, out of all of them people and whatever, she's all rookie and she's a WNBA champion. But that's perseverance. It didn't just happen. It didn't just happen. Right? Um, so anybody, do anybody else have any other questions? Can you talk about your off seasons and, and what you have to do to add to your game or skill sets or things that you do to make sure that from your freshman year to your sophomore year, from your sophomore year to your junior year, even from, from my senior year to the WNBA, like mm -hmm. looking at your game and saying, I need to add this to it. Okay, so coming in at um, my freshman year at Louisville, I want to say I shot the ball, the three point at bad percentage, like 20%, something crazy. So my sophomore year, my goal was to be really good at shooting threes. Okay, then sophomore year came, I shot the ball at 40%. 40% or better three point. The next year I figure, okay, I got the three ball in, I can go all the way to the basket, I'm quick. Let's add a middle game. Mid-range, floaters, different hand, both hands, like I said. And then senior year, it was, let's put everything together and let's try to get a little shiftier. So it's always things you can put in your game, whether that's your middle game, your three point, get to the basket, both hands, um, it's always something ball handling. Like it's it's never where you can be like, okay, I've made it. Like I've arrived. Like I don't have to work on nothing anymore. But like off season, we don't. I don't really have off seasons. But <laughs> yeah. And, and you and you got to be coachable. Even like when when I first met Dana, she came in this gym. She was already extremely decorated, meaning she was one of the best players in the world. But when the pandemic, when the pandemic hit, right, while everybody else was in the house, we were in this gym every single day. And sometimes Dana would call in the morning and say, um, shit, can I come in at 1130? But then I want to come back at six by myself. Yeah. Like, like that, those are the things that she was doing during the pandemic. Those, those, and so I would show people, I think I even showed Bree a couple times that text from her yeah. to say like, like, so she's like, I'm gonna work out in the morning. This is one of the most decorated people in college basketball. So she could have easily, I'm gonna sit around, I'm gonna chill. They're gonna be talking about me on ESPN anyway. Right? But instead she started putting in two a days. Yeah. Right? And then be coachable. Yeah, coachable. That's important too. Because you always want you you, you want to get better. You want to you want people to tip. Like that's why I like to have different trainers and work out with different people because people see different things. Like Tim is more shifty. He had me going left to right more. Then you got other people working on different things. So it's always good to have other people, you know, helping you with things. But listen to your coaches because they want the best for you. You had a question, Dixie. Oh, yeah. I got a shift question. <laughs> well, okay. In the game, in the games, I don't wear makeup. I just have my lashes done. 
lashes always come. <laughs> but uh, my hair, I usually just, I get it done like twice a week. Or, no, once every two weeks. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and and I like to because she's a, she's a girly girl, so so she's a girly girl. She's you know, she's about fashion. She's gonna put her makeup on. She's gonna have her eyelashes. Like she's a girl. She's a girly girl. Yeah, and and that's okay. Be a girl. Be a girly girl. And then when you get when you get out on that court, be a dog. And then as soon as you leave it, go be a girly girl. We got a coach. I got a question right there. I got a question. Yes. Dana, uh, how important is it for women to be <laughs> okay, well, composure is just how you, I think composure is more of how you carry yourself after things is not going well. I just see when, when you scoring and you making shots and you stealing the ball and you winning, you're going to be happy. You're going to be cheered. But how do you act when things are not going your way? How do you act when y'all are moving? How do, you, how do you act as a teammate when your shot is not going in? That's one of the most, most frustrating things, let's be honest. Like, when you're not making your shot, you upset. Right. But you can't do that. You have to be a better teammate when you are not doing the best. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so, yeah. And body language is how are you sitting on the bench? You don't want to just be slouched over like you don't care. That's important. Like college coaches, they look at all this, not just how you score the ball, how you put the ball in the basket. Is, is she a good teammate? Is she a good person? How is she acting when things are not going her way? That's what they ask themselves when they're recruiting y'all and watching y'all play. So it's more than just putting that ball in the basket. Did they ask you a question? Absolutely. And, and the more you obviously make it about you mm -hmm. and your body language is about you, I'm not getting things done or coach is taking me out of the game and I'm not happy. And the more you make it about you, college coaches pick up on that. All coaches pick up on that. And they're not into you players. They're into team players. They're into we players. Um, and I know Coach Byron, I mean, when he substitutes and he sees somebody coming in off, off the floor and they're like this and they're frustrated and throwing their hands up and they're talk smacking back and forth. I mean, that's the last thing. I've never seen David do that in all the years of doing well. I never saw him do that. Um, and that's, that's how leaders act. That's, that, and that's what coaches want. Girls go to play high school basketball and then maybe basketball after that. You need to act like it. Yeah. Play like it's one thing, act like it's another. When you talk about uh, nutrition and taking care of your body, what it takes to be a elite athlete. Yeah, Gabby. And, and listen, not eat McDonald's. Listen to this, Gabby. Every day. You know what we be talking about with your nutrition? Eating before practice, Gabby? Will you call me out? Yeah, yeah, listen, Gabby. <laughs> okay, well, your body is your money maker. That, that's how that's how I look at it. This is how I'm going to perform. This is how I'm going to provide for myself, provide for my family. So what you're putting in your body, you're telling your body, this is this is how I'm treating you. It's important to put what you need in your body. Now, obviously, you're going to have some cheat days where you're going to get you some McDonald's. That ain't the best. You know, it happens, but you be smart with your nutrition. You make sure you're getting your vegetables, your fruit. Just just be smart about it. And I think that's that's how I was about it. I, I wasn't the most healthiest until I got to college, and I had a nutrition help me and meal prep and stuff like that. But it's your, it's your money maker, so you don't put anything in it. So, and, and, I, and I was saying that, and I was saying that to Gabby because uh, she would come and practice sometimes and then without eating. 
And then obviously, if you don't put gas in the tank, then you're not gonna be able to be at your fullest and eventually you're gonna run out of gas, right? So it's very important that when you come, that you're, you're, you're hydrated, you put the right stuff in you, and then you're ready to go. And helping you, that keeps you being health, healthy as well on the court. That prevents injuries and stuff like that, staying hydrated and get to cramping and all that. So to avoid that, just you know, you know what's good and what's bad. Mm -hmm. When your ticket turns off as a ballerina, how did you pick if you how did you pick do you want to play basketball? Oh well, as soon as I picked that basketball up, everything else stopped. <laughs> I mean, it was done. I, I started playing in the fourth grade, and by sixth grade, that was basically the only thing I was playing. So I kind of knew, you, you kind of know what, what your love is. Have you ever had, like, a period or, like, like, I don't know, an off, like, week or days and where you're not being a bad or to your fullest? What do you do to, like, kind of, like, get out of it or get out of improve it. yourself? That's a good question. Um, I used to struggle with that my freshman and sophomore year in college. So I started talking to a sports psychologist. Uh, her name is Vanessa. And she helped me be able to snap out of things. Um, and I would just say my advice for that is to have short-term memory because basketball is a game of runs and you, you're, not, you're never gonna have a perfect game. You know, so that's kind of what I try to remind myself and to just think next play. So I would write on my shoes next play so when I look down, okay, that what just happened, you can't get it back. So that's kind of how I try to live my life, period. Just move forward and don't think about the past. Let the past motivate you. Um, this is like, so I'm a multi-sport athlete, and if you were, like, if I'm having trouble picking which one I like more, would you continue, would you say, like, continue playing both until you have to actually make a decision? Yeah, I would, I would continue to do both. Until, what are your two sport volleyball? Uh, baseball and basketball. Baseball. Yeah, I would just continue to do both until, obviously, like, an offer come up or you really, when the time is now to take, then then you think. But I would just continue to play throughout, throughout high school. being said uh, obviously Dana we want to thank you for um, you know come on because again she just drove from Indiana to come here to be here with you all today she really could have been home resting she's kind of nur nurturing an injury but it was important for her to come here today and just to kind of see you all and it's like I told you um, you know she'll be around obviously she has a professional life and what it is that she's doing uh, but she'll be watching us. You know, she, some of you all, she's already watched you and know what you're doing in high school. She's active on uh, Twitter and Instagram. So if, if you all are uh, on those social uh, networking sites, make sure you go follow her. Um, and then the one thing I want you to say before you go, Dana, is, is this. One of the things that I'm most proud of her about is she's not just a basketball player. Like now she's got other business endeavors that she's doing away from the game. So she's growing Dana Evans, the brand, right? And so that's very important for you all. Your brand starts now, your brand is who you are. So your brand starts right now. So what makes me as a coach 
want to invest $100,000 into you, Greer? <laughs> That's a rhetorical question, but but my, my, my point is you got to make somebody want to invest in you. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, that's what it's about, right? So, Dana, if you could kind of tell them just a couple of business endeavors of what you got going on away from basketball. Okay, so I have obviously an eyelash deal. <laughs> and, that, and, and the eyelash, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, so it's going to be on college campuses, right? Yes. So I'm going to put a vending machine. It's like an eyelash vending machine. It's going to be in the, on the Louisville campus. We haven't put it up yet. We're still working on it. So. Mm -hmm. Take a picture in front of the tag. Me in it, so. <laughs> so, yeah, so and then what is the other thing you're doing? So I recently had a um, suitcase deal as well with Every Brain. That's another black-owned business. And right now we're still working on a headphone. But I think all that stuff comes with just being the best version of yourself. Mm -hmm. um, just be you. Don't don't try to be anybody else or try to look like somebody. I mean, you have your idols and you want to play like them and stuff like that. But be the best version of you. That's what I tell myself. And that's what being elite is. Is being elite is you being the best version of yourself. Okay. All right. So what I would like to do, Dana, is if we could get if we could get a picture, okay. if we can get everybody, let's go. Let's go ahead. Actually, actually, let's go by Rondo. Yeah, just do it. Come on, y'all. We're going to go by Rondo. Oh, that's sweet. I've never seen this. No.